Hello guys and welcome to another episode of my YouTube videos. Today's video will be about how to customize your carving knives. In this case we will use uh, the Mora knife 106 and 105. Um, we will make some chip carving in the handle, paint it and we will make a birch bark sheath with some pine roots to it. Um, I've been looking forward to this video for a long time because I really really love to personalize your or my my tools um, and the good thing about Mora knives is that they are they are not really expensive but they're still a very good carving knife so how you can personalize it and um, yeah make them super super awesome please like and subscribe um, to my channel and videos um, for more quality content I will be so happy um, if you do that So the thing I really like about the wooden handle and the knives is that you can make some nice deco cuts, um, some chip carving and paint the handle. This is a red handle and I've painted this red. Normally you can buy Mora knives with the other traditional red handle but you can, you can paint them blue or green or even pink if you want. Um, that might be a good idea for a really girly knife. Um, and as one of the, you know, that's, this is one of the main things that, about this video and the second thing is how to make the birch bark sheath. So in this video I will go and show you how to make these birch bark sheaths with some pine root and then carve and paint the handle. So when you got the knife here as it is and you have to make the custom cuts on the handle or you have to m measure the length and all that and the width of the bar birch bark um, I mean really do not have the, 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 the edge like that because it's it's dangerous it's really sharp so just take some tape here and wrap it around so you'll get a secure tool when you work and that's pretty easy, you know, it's not that difficult. So to make a birch bark sheath, we have, uh, or we need some birch bark and you can have, take some of the small uh, pieces from the woods and in Denmark here there's a lot of birch trees you can go and buy, uh, buy some of these kind of and yeah I don't know what to call it an arc or something big pieces and just to make a um, compare this to another piece um, there's a lot of these bad spots you can see it on the back side here it can be a bit difficult to get long nice pieces from this one so I will figure out how to use this, use that or, and for what for well, this here is really good a few weeks ago I went out in the forest to get these and uh, of course you can keep them fresh because they will obviously rotten so you can you can you know round them up in this uh, or coil them up and then uh, simply dry it. And when you have to use it, just put it in some water for I don't know, 30 minutes, maybe more, uh, maybe less, but until they are kind of more soft and yeah, easy to work with. So we'll put this over there and put them right there. So the trick here is that you can take this piece into a vise and then have this cutting surface so you don't use your workbench here. So I take a ruler and then remove all those bad bits there. Uh, 
And I like to use this plastic ruler because if it's metal, you can really damage that edge of the knife. So the blade here is eight centimeter, and I think I will leave, I don't know, an extra, extra half centimeter. So that's almost 35, so we will cut it up there. And just to make it a bit more even, we'll do the same as before, just to make some better, better cuts here. I am right-handed and left-handed cuts, or these awkward makes me insane, so this is just a bit more easy. And how wide should it be? Yeah, not as wide as this here. That doesn't really matter, so. This one here, the blade in the bottom is one and a half, so we can make it. If you measure here with the other one, around two. Just trim it up here. Like this. And then you take the ends and put them down there. So you make this kind of a, uh, wow, there, heart shape then press them together so you get four layers so this is pretty easy and now you the thing you need here is start coiling it up with the the roots you take the other knife here Just be sure you don't carve or cut yourself with it. So really important when you you make this that you have enough tightness so it will grip the knife. So this um, you won't you don't want this just to fall off. It needs to be tight. So we want the long, nice roots so you don't have to stop in the middle of the way and then proceed with another one so you have this yeah two pieces i mean it's way better to have one strong piece running through so the beginning of your when you start using this make this kind of cut here and you can actually try to slice it a bit so it's easier to get this inside through there. And here, and don't, don't uh, take it out there, just leave it inside. I don't want that little end sticking out, so I'll try to do this here. In the beginning, it can be a bit annoying here, but... Always try to keep it a 
as tight as possible. There. I'll try to be in the camera thing here. Always have in mind that you <laughs> need to see what I'm doing. Yeah, sorry. So, now you can start to put this on the outside. And there are so many ways to do this. This one here, you see that I made two, you know, coils around there, and two, and two, and two. You can also use this. This is from uh, an awesome and very, very nice American guy called Don Nashisi, who made this for me, birch bark and roots also. You can see it's very important to have a piece of root that is long enough. I think this is actually just perfect. Wow! So, in the end here, in the last bit, there's room for, there might be room for another run, but I'm not sure there will be enough root left. When this will dry, it will harden up and make it a bit more stiff. So here, yep, and then let's see if it, if it fits, you see the length here is right as it should be. And now it's really it's really tight so if you try and if you push all you can like this you can just cut it up and open up your new sheath and your hand that's really stupid so That is tight and that I think this is really good. So here's there's three knives. The 105 and the 106, and it's the same blade, so this is not. Uh, this is only just a, a different handle. We want to customize the handle. If you want these cuts here, the chip carving. Um, if you want the the nice natural tree colors, we paint the handle first and then make the cuts. And with this knife, we can paint the handle, and then. With, with some milk paint and then sand off the, the ridges here so we will get a very nice looking knife. This here is some of the milk paint from real milk paint in the US, the earth green, and this looks really nice.
So now the knife has been painted and it's not really dry yet. But that gives an idea of how awesome it looks. I'll take a better pictures and some more angles in a second when this is more dried out. But here, I think that this we can could go on a, make some pretty nice colors to this. Uh, but today I want to try something pretty insane that I haven't really, a color I haven't tried before. I think it's called Aqua. Wow. And when this will get some oil it will get a bit more darker than this. Yeah, just be cautious. You know they have you have the the edge, and this knife needs a proper sharpening. So if I hit it, the edge with the sandpaper, it's it's not a disaster. So then I just wipe it off with a wet towel just to to get some of the excess dusty colors or milk paint off, and you can see how it will look. This will dry in a second, but when this will get oiled up, it will look like that. So, I will finish this, this uh, knife later. And um, put this here. And I think it's uh, it's a winner. When the painting has dried and there's a little space there where it could be, yeah, it's not all totally dried up, but whatever, it's okay. I take a, some paper towel just to get off some of the excess colors too, as with the, with the other knife with the green painting. You could make some different small triangle cuts or some rings around. And I think I will make the rings just as this one. So when you want to make those rings around the handle, it's very important to, to draw a guideline. Because you can make so much crap <laughs> by not having some sort of a, a guide. Um, so I will make them here and I will make them up there. See if we can make it. Yeah, so now it's just a question of make some V cuts. So I think this made it a bit better.
nothing much, but I still like some small things on the knives here. I know I said in the beginning that I didn't want this to be over decorated, but I don't know, I changed my mind and and wrote this that way. Um, and I don't know, really. I like the simplicity of this side here. Um, and then this just, yeah, went kind of mad. I will give it, give it some oil. I will actually give it some of this. It's called uh, linolivox or some linseed oil and some beeswax. Um, let's give it, give it some of this. Because it needs some treatment, some love. And then it just needs to dry for a week or some few days. So guys, um, here is the knife that uh, I just made. And I think that um, because the milk paint gets so brittle um, it, and, and the surface is so crispy, um, it will it cracks off when you push the knife or the edge to make the small cuts here. Um, so I think the milk paint is some of the best thing to use just because it looks so damn awesome. So it looks like this. Can I get a focus? Can I get a... Yay! That's a focus! Whoa! So that's a knife that looked like this before. And here's the two. I really like it. I like those. So, go out and um, customize your own blades. I hope this video help you on your way to to make some more personalized things instead of just go with the flow and be like everyone else um, or just have those um, not boring but still a bit boring just normal knives um, this is so damn great I think Take care. Uh, again, please like and subscribe and I hope I will see you for more nice quality content videos. Take care.